Hello, uh, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Troy Roach, and I'm going to present our nicotine patch therapy uh, data for long COVID and ME-CFS. I am a citizen scientist. I've had long COVID since March of 2020. I teach medical English at Comillas University here in Madrid, Spain, and I collaborate with uh, Renegade Research. I started the nicotine test in May of 2023. So some more abbreviations. All right, first, uh, long COVID and MACFS uh, affect a lot of people. Long COVID alone affects more than 400 million people and it costs the economy more than a trillion dollars a year. It affects all organ systems and there are no treatments. Unfortunately, it is mostly ignored by doctors and patients feel invisible, so they are abandoned to self-experimentation. But they don't have data. So uh, when Dr. Marco Liske's hypothesis came out about the spike blocking nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, uh, he tested it on four initial cases at seven milligrams for a week, and that was successful. So a lot of people uh, started to do their own blind uh, end of one experiments at home. But unfortunately, these experiments had a lot of problems because seven milligrams was too high for some people. Uh, some people were experimenting with even 21 milligrams on the first day. And there was confusion between different types of nicotine and, and worries about addiction, even though there, that doesn't seem to be a, a problem and many other problems as well. So in May of 2023, I started the nicotine test in order to collect all the research and data from the early uh, nicotine patch testers in order to reduce the harm uh, through education to the different uh, communities out there and to improve the outcomes uh, for people uh, who are doing the testing. So uh, I now have data for 221 people, but uh, I can't share that data yet because it's pending publication, but I already did share data from 148 people in December of 2023. And this data shows that there's a clinical significant uh, change with the use of, of nicotine patches for long COVID. And the responders, people who respond get a, 20% increase in their baseline. The baseline is measured with the Bell's functionality scale. So for us, it's very clear that the nicotine patch is very helpful. And also uh, people in MECFS community started experimenting with the nicotine patch as well, because if it's helping their, their cousins in the long COVID community, then maybe it works for them. And actually, it does. It helps a lot of people, even people who have been sick for decades. So that means that the original viral blockade theory uh, might not be the only reason why it's beneficial for people. And there are probably multiple reasons. So one theory could be that it's reducing inflammation at the low doses. It's helping with immune modulation. It's helping with NAD plus uh, synthesis. It's also helping protect the brain uh, from uh, viral invasion, from acute infections. And then also it's uh, maybe helping with autophagy and mitochondrial function, etc. And the most important uh, reason that I see is uh, cholinergic rebalancing. Uh, which uh, has been looked at in other diseases such as Parkinson's. The cholinergic rebalancing is very important because uh, I've seen through my research that a lot of the people that are trying the nicotine patch are have either ADHD or they're autistic. So I learned about highly sensitive people and then found out that I am also a highly sensitive person. And so... This only normally is seen in 15 to 20% of the population. But in my informal polls, 90% of people in the long COVID and ME-CFS communities say that they are highly sensitive people or they have autism or ADHD or multiple 
of those. So 90% is a very high uh, correlation for, for this. So in theory, uh, there are already genetic markers showing that 40% of HSPs have differences in dopamine and serotonin uh, receptor genes. So the neurons in the brain of this cohort are probably more sensitive. Uh, and so when there's a stressor, e.g. a viral infection, this causes neurological damage. And due to the innate plasticity, this causes a cholinergic imbalance and a sickness response, which would explain long COVID and MECFS. So if this is true, then we would know who is more susceptible to long COVID and MECFS, uh, people in the HSP community. And uh, we'd also know that people are self-medicating with uh, nicotine or smoking in the HSP community as well. So maybe uh, low-dose transdermal nicotine could be used as prevention, right? Both yeah. as prevention to avoid issues with uh, long COVID and MECFS happening in the beginning, and also to reduce the amount of smokers. Uh, for this, we also need to look at the long-term research uh, for low-dose transdermal nicotine past five years. That would be important to see the safety information. And some caveats to keep in mind, I'm not a scientist or a doctor. I have a personal bias since I respond well to the nicotine patch. There are multiple theories which could be correct, and patient advocates should be part of any future research into this field. And also I take this chance to ask for any help if there's anybody who wants to collaborate in future research and any transdermal nicotine experts who could help. There's a huge market out there for cuttable, low-dose transdermal uh, matrix-type nicotine patches that doesn't exist, and the financing for future research. And of course, if you want any information about me or the research, you can find it on uh, Linktree. And uh, thank you for listening to my talk. Have a nice day.